Hello, hello. So today we are talking about fertility, menstrual cycles, and irregular menstrual cycles. Focusing majorly on irregular menstrual cycles because they are at an all-time rise. Just in the US alone, 14 to 25% of women have an irregular menstrual cycle. Can you imagine what this means on a global scale? It's mind blowing. So if your menstrual cycle is just another like body mechanism doing its own thing, you could say, okay, have your own way. I'll figure it out and just pummel through it and push through anything, but not here, not today, not now, because your menstrual cycle is so important. It determines your sleep cycle, it maintains your mood, your general health, and most importantly, your fertility, which is why we're here today. Hi everyone, I am Lynn Ladd, women's wellness mentor and functional nutrition coach. And today, we are talking about irregular periods and how you can get pregnant in spite of them. Okay, so do you remember in school when we were told that our menstrual cycle shows up once a month, specifically every 28 days? Well, guess what? As per this study, only 16% of women have the average normal. 16, that's it. So how can everyone be told that it's supposed to show up every 28 days when in fact it doesn't? Maybe it's something to strive for, but maybe it's really just not realistic. So if you're someone whose periods occur every 21 to 35 days, have a consistent two to seven day flow and a period that is painless or without much discomfort, you have a regular cycle, okay? Now, an irregular period are the ones that vary from cycle to cycle, occur outside of the 21 to 35 day range, have symptoms like menstrual cramping, bloating, and other discomforts, and they can also be longer or shorter, with a lighter, heavier flow. So for most women, 69% of our cycles can vary under over six days. This means that one month you might have a 28 day cycle, but then the next month you might have a 37 day average and then back to maybe 29 ish days. So then it's just so obvious that irregular cycles make predicting fertility very difficult and making conception can be a real big struggle. To understand how, let's study a regular menstrual cycle. We're gonna get a little scientific. Hang with me here, okay? So in a regular cycle, there's a very delicate balance of hormones that ensure the reproductive health of your fertility. These important sex hormones are FSH, your follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen, LH, your luteinizing hormone, and progesterone, okay? So these four things, hormones, manage your ovulation, AKA your eggs release, its fertilization, and then the implantation. Your menstrual cycle begins with the FSH, pumped into your system through the pituitary part of your brain. Its purpose, to stimulate your ovarian follicles into maturation. So each of which of these egg follicles carries an egg. So like a lovely midwife helping to deliver your baby, your FSH nurtures and develops your follicles. So these follicles begin releasing estrogen, which then helps build the lining of your uterus. Only one of these follicles becomes the dominant one. As they've matured, one becomes the dominant one from the maturation of the eggs. So this dominant follicle adds even more estrogen which then signals to your brain to send LH in. So a surge in LH triggers ovulation. Enter your egg. It is around this major mid-cycle event that your fertile window opens. This is four days before ovulation, the day of ovulation and the day after. If you have sex during this window, you can get pregnant, all thanks to ovulation. After ovulation, the remains of the ruptured follicle develop into a cell structure called the corpus luteum. It begins flushing you with progesterone. Now, progesterone is a pregnancy essential. It thickens your uterine lining, padding it with blood vessels in preparation for implantation. These hormones work in a delicate tandem to ensure that your regular menstrual cycle is functioning 
and you are fertile. So when any of this is disrupted, the imbalance can cause irregularities and make it very difficult for, for anyone to predict ovulation, predict implantation, and even conceive. So what exactly causes these irregularities? Basically, erratic cycles are a result of erratic hormone levels, and each hormone gets impacted differently because of different conditions. Did you know that 80% of women have hormonal imbalances? So here are the nine conditions responsible for the hormonal imbalances. If you haven't already, you can get tested for any of these nine to find the root cause of your regular cycles. First, let's talk about PCOS because it's become such a household name and we're all experts on it by now, right? So, but have you ever wondered what actually happens during PCOS? So it's kind of the same thing, this hormonal dance gone wrong, two left feet, it's just things aren't working. So the ever high LH levels that push and push your follicles to release an egg, which in the end with PCOS, they just don't get released. Your eggs never end up getting released. And because of this overstimulation, it may result in multiple cysts in your ovaries to grow, hence the name polycystic. In addition to that, some women might also have estrogen dominance. So super high estrogen levels along with lower progesterone levels, these can definitely interfere with development and the release of your eggs, which is a major contributor to irregular periods or anovulation, thus resulting in difficulty conceiving. And then all of that, plus the much hated testosterone related symptoms like acne, facial hair, balding. In short, PCOS is just a big fat bummer. Number two, the second, stress. <laughs> stress. It is the cause of the rampant cortisol in our bodies and it produces massive amounts of cortisol. So did you know that cortisol, progesterone, and estrogen are all formed due to the same raw material, pregnenolone? I know we've talked about this in other videos, but when you are stressed, your body invests most of this pregnenolone to produce cortisol. And the result, you have lower progesterone levels and estrogen levels, thus contributing to regular menstrual periods and more difficulty conceiving. Okay, number three. So that tiny little butterfly shaped gland in your throat is your thyroid and it too can cause irregular cycles. So thyroid dysfunction can affect the availability, metabolism, and movement of your sex hormones throughout your body. The thyroid hormones T3 and T4 influence the production of blood protein called sex hormone binding globulin or SH. BG. Your sex hormones basically hitch a ride on the SHBG to flow through your bloodstream. Okay, so in hypothyroidism, your thyroid functions poorly. It has low levels of T3 and T4, which makes the SHBG levels way too low. And so the other extreme is hyperthyroidism. Think high T3 and T4. So high levels of SHBG and of course, higher levels of estrogen and progesterone are now moving about your body. Additionally, thyroid dysfunction reduces the rate at which your body uses and removes your fertility hormones. We need it to be pumping through our body and getting out. So, and plus T3 plays around with the production of testosterone and estrogen directly relating to ovulation. Okay, that was number three. There's even more of a bigger villain here. Are you ready? Number four, endometriosis. Endometriosis is a uterine condition where instead of buffing up your uterine lining, a similar padding may develop on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, outer uterine surface, or even other pelvic organs. So it's pretty excruciating and it's difficult. It is associated with painful intercourse and in short, it is like the pelvic pain during your periods multiplied. It made this list because it too causes menstrual irregularities and discomfort, major discomfort. So, and this is how. The tissues growing outside of the uterine cavity disrupt estrogen and progesterone interaction. So in a normal cycle, progesterone and estrogen act like they're on a seesaw. They counterbalance each other for smooth reproductive functioning. 
But with endometriosis, there's estrogen dominance, super high estrogen levels with low progesterone levels, and progesterone resistance, where your uterine lining basically ignores your progesterone. Plus, often there's not much progesterone available to counterbalance the estrogen anyways. So the result, irregular periods, painful, a decrease in implantation receptivity, and all these things impact the, the possibility of conception. All right, number five, luteal phase defect. The second half of your menstrual cycle is your luteal phase. It starts the day after you ovulate and it offers room for fertilization and implantation and ends the day before you get your next period. So normally it is 12 to 14 days long, but a condition like luteal phase defect reduces it to less than 11 days. It's caused by low progesterone levels and eventually it begins causing lower progesterone. And so the impact means that you have a weaker uterine lining that falls short at receiving implantation. So LPD also causes poor conception and recurrent miscarriages, which definitely requires a medical intervention. Number six, your weight. You probably already know the value of healthy weight, healthy eating, healthy living, healthy lifestyle for your conception. And primarily your body's fat cells are important for estrogen production because cholesterol converts to pregnenolone, to testosterone and to estrogen. So cholesterol, pregnenolone, testosterone, estrogen. The higher body weight is that you have, is associated with more fat cells. And these fat cells tend to convert into estrogen, causing higher estrogen levels. So on the other hand, if you're also too low of a body weight, it could mean that we have lesser fat cells and hence lesser estrogen levels. So we really gotta find that balance. Okay, number seven, over exercise. So exercise in general is so essential for healthy hormonal function but intense exercise or long periods of high intensity exercise can lead to high testosterone levels. And this leads to a decrease in body fat and consequentially estrogen levels. And remember how estrogen is essential in creating uterine lining? At its best, insufficient estrogen will cause irregular or absent periods. And at its worst, poor development of your uterine lining and hence weak implantation. All right. Number eight, high prolactin levels. Prolactin is released during pregnancy and post-delivery for breastfeeding. It helps a mother secrete milk, plus it reduces other sex hormone levels in a bit to say, let's prevent ovulation. So high levels of prolactin during any other time can cause hormonal imbalances. Stress or some types of pituitary tumors cause these unnecessary levels. The imbalance induced by these pro prolactin levels can lead to irregular periods too. And then number nine. Last one, number nine, perimenopause. Perimenopause, as you might know, is the period when a woman's body transitions from a reproductive state to a non-reproductive state. During perimenopause, your reproductive system definitely acts out. Estrogen and progesterone reduce, causing irregular periods and difficulty conceiving. Plus, it can cause some mood swings, changes in libido, some hot flashes, difficulty sleeping, all those fun things. Predicting other fertility functions, a very big task. FSH levels start rising and LH levels fluctuate too, affecting ovulation. Everything's just kind of like going up and down. So perimenopause can last anywhere between a few months to several years. It typically ends after one has missed their period for 12 months straight, and then it opens the door into menopause. So up until now, women got menopause between the ages of 45 and 55, but recently many women have been entering early menopause. This is where a woman's ovaries have stopped releasing eggs and her estrogen levels fall significantly with FSH levels rising higher. If you're experiencing irregular periods with or without perimenopause, it still might be a good idea for you to go and talk to your OBGYN. You should be seeing them once a year anyways minimum. They can help evaluate your hormone status, offer treatments to manage your symptoms, and even help you map a way 
to conception. And so these treatments might include a lifestyle change, hormone therapy, so on and so forth. So how do you get pregnant with irregular periods? See, as long as you're ovulating, you can get pregnant. And at the end of the day, the basis of conception remains the same. Egg releases, meets the sperm. So with irregular periods, things do get a little tricky, but worry not, we have solutions and that is what we are going to talk about. Okay, so A, you can track your ovulation. So normally we would say use the OPKs and the calendar methods, monitor your basal body temperature, watch out for other signs of ovulation, like you know the cervical discharge and cervic, cervical placement and positioning. However, these methods can be subjective and definitely unreliable. So this is where NITO stands out and something I wish I would have known about sooner on my trying to conceive journey because the monitor helps you track your hormone levels and you can map irregularities. And so you can take this hormone chart while seeing your doctor and make a management plan with them. Do you wanna know how Anito's monitor chart works? Okay, so do you see all of these charts from Anito users with irregular cycles? Anito puts your sex hormones and ovulation literally at your fingertips. So through it, you can track your real-time values of estrogen, metabolite, E3G, FSH, LH, and progesterone metabolite, PDG, all in a single strip. So you already know how estrogen metabolite E3G rises, and then LH rises to trigger ovulation. And with the regular cycles, it can go haywire, but enter Amido. It predicts your estrogen metabolite, your E3G, and LH levels accurately. So no matter if their rise is slow or delayed or whatever our hormones are doing, you can predict that your fertile window is on the way. So this window is four days before ovulation and the ovulation day and the day after ovulation. Also, you can prepare for some we time, some us time. Anito maps the entire ovulation window by your real-time estrogen metabolite E3G rise and the significant rise of LH from your baseline. Okay, so that is how the monitor works. Anito measures PDG, the metabolite form of progesterone, to confirm ovulation. Progesterone metabolite PDG, which rises right after ovulation, and it confirms it by saying, hey, it's really just happened. You did ovulate. So by then, PDG goes on. There's also other things that you can do, like weight management. If you feel that's the case for you, you can also try regulating your weight. So for those who are overweight, reducing your weight by five to 10% can help balance hormones. Try achieving your ideal body weight by eating nutritious foods and exercising regularly if you're on the lower side of your body weight, okay? Improving your insulin sensitivity and diet, increased blood sugar can also contribute to hormonal imbalance. You can regulate your diet to avoid insulin resistance. So try to reduce your simple carbs, processed foods, and any unhealthy fat intake. Cue this with 150 minutes per week of medium-ish impact exercise, okay? So you can also opt in for walking about 10,000 steps in a day to get your daily movement. And then on top of that, improve your sleeping habits. Good sleep can reduce stress, improve hormonal functioning and serve as a natural antidote to factors contributing to menstrual irregularities. And here's how. So a good and uninterrupted sleep can improve FSH levels by 20%. A regular sleep schedule can improve estrogen balance by 60%. And then every hour of sleep in your scheduled sleep time can increase your progesterone levels by 9.4%. Knowledge is power, my friends, and now you know all of the ways to balance these irregularities. Follow them to get pregnant, get the monitor, talk to your doctor, get after it, and you can do it despite having irregular periods. Go for it. The good news might just be right around the corner.